Whether you believe Kevin Smith or not about Masters of the Universe Revelation being a spiritual sequel to the 1983 filmation show or a sequel to the 1992 toy line, or whether you believe Netflix when they promote the show as a sequel to the filmation show, one thing is for sure, it is all lies and deceit to get the old guard of fans interested in this new show that in reality isn't a sequel to neither of those things, but a show in its own right, with its own continuity and its own backstory that takes and borrows from other different sources. This has become evident to me in the newly released comic book prequel Masters of the Universe Revelation by Dark Horse Comics. This prequel is also written by the people who are involved in this show, such as Kevin Smith himself. The artwork is, well, it is decent. The best part for me is the cover, and even though there is a variant by Mike Mignola, I think it is not fit for him, and, and it doesn't make him look good. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Mignola sucks, I actually like his artwork, and I like his Hellboy stories, but I am saying that his style does not really gel well with Masters of the Universe. Now, the book begins with King Randor being worried that he heard a noise in the middle of the night. Instead of trying to show support for her husband, Queen Marlena dismisses his worries as nothing important because evil creatures and magic don't happen in the kingdom and they, as Queen Marlena puts it, have better things to do than to bother an old man, even if he is king. Of course, the queen is dead wrong, and before long, it is revealed that a creature from another dimension they know as the Orlax has somehow poisoned the king, and upon being taken into Castle Grayskull for the sorceress to see what can be done to make him wake up from his trance, it is given to him a special duty, to travel in time into the past and find out how his ancestors dealt with the Orlax, since the creature knows the power sword from a previous encounter with no other than King Grayskull himself. As spoiled last week, King Grayskull is a black man now, but since he is He-Man's ancestor, something has to be done to dilute the melanin in the family, right Kevin Smith? And so they have him have two kids, Dare and Ro. One is black and the other one is white because the queen is also white in this prequel. Now, let's stop right here. It has been touted by Netflix and even Kevin Smith, even though he chooses to forget that this was a sequel to the Filmation show. Nowhere in that show was there any sign of King Grayskull or his son. Likewise, the toy line died in 1997 before they could make the figures that were going to be in the Preternia period, precisely, when King Grayskull is supposed to have lived. Surely this is a mistake and the show will ignore all of that and be a true sequel, right? Well, not so fast, dear viewers. Remember, King Grayskull is seen there in the second trailer, or at least a part of him. So, this is not really a sequel. This is its own thing, right? But of course, Kevin Smith, and even Netflix, and also, why not say it? Mattel, when it is convenient for them to keep on selling toys, this is a sequel to something that the fans have always wanted, and something the fans cherish close to their hearts. Now, the kids' names are also an indication that this isn't the sequel to the show or the toy line. One of them is called Dare, and it's the oldest. Now, according to Scott Nydlick, who worked for Mattel and helped write the worst parts of the classic toy line, according to some of the collectors out there, Dare was supposed to be Prince Adam and Tila's son's name. He would eventually become Hero. So, hang on a second there, is Kevin Smith using information and stories from the classics line? Is he resorting to other things that didn't come from the Filmation show or the 1982 toy line? <gasps> Say it isn't so, please! Shocking! I think it was evident since the very moment in which they used and race-swapped King Grayskull, don't you think? 
Wasn't that evidence enough that this new Netflix bastardization of the franchise was going to be its own show with its own timeline and its own backstory? And maybe we could even say its own agenda. <laughs> because for a show that's supposed to be a sequel or a quote-unquote spiritual sequel, it sure doesn't seem to draw some of the most important moments from that which is supposed to be before this show. But the Smith stands, and those who say we shouldn't voice our opinions or express our concerns because somehow that destroys their entertainment, yeah, we have that much power over their lives. They will say at this point, Oh, you don't have any evidence to that? This is but a piece of the biggest story. That doesn't mean it won't be a sequel. Nyah, 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 nyah. More evidence then for all of you. Right after King Randor is taken to Castle Grayskull, Tila sucks a bit too much about how Prince Adam should be there. The girl doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> but good old... Orko is there to save his friend and promises Chilla he will keep the royal family posted on any new developments. Yeah, Chilla. The same person that was always fond of Adam and who appreciated him despite his somewhat laid back attitude, that's who you are supposed to be, now is angry at him for not being there even though Queen Morlina isn't there either. Yes, women hate men. We get it. You try to be progressive. Try instead to write a decent story, you hacks. And I'm talking mainly to you, Kevin Smith. Oh, that's not evidence enough that they don't care about being a sequel, but being their own thing, you might say? Evidence that they don't give a dime about the lore? Well, in comes time traveling. For anyone who remembers the story of this franchise and the mini comics that came with the toys, they know full well messing up with time is prohibited. Whenever someone in the present travels to the past, they have to be disguised or they could bring about terrible consequences. That isn't the case here. Oh no, sir. Of course not. Human needs to travel to the past. By all means, don't even bother trying to cover yourself or to disguise yourself or even... Uh, the same sword that you see the creation of, don't hide it. Please, don't try to conceal it in any way, shape or form. Please give away where, or more like when, you come from. Also, please, interfere with the events. Go and interact with everyone. Name the bloody best you need to fight in the present, so that the youngest kid of your ancestor uses that name and it is passed on. Create a paradox, by all means do it. And while we're at it, why don't you also suggest King Grayskull hide his palace, giving it the more familiar Castle Grayskull look and the name as well. Yeah, it's that disrespectful of the lore this thing. But wait, there's more. The creation of the power sword, I hear you say. Is that here in this comic book? Yes, but no problem with that. To save his son, King Grayskull is told by the Elder Powers that he needs a weapon that can cut in both this dimension and the one the creature comes from, but that it comes with a high price. They agree with Grayskull, however, that his line must follow and decide to help him. So, to make the power sword, he needs an orb that none other but Scareglow has, thus making King Grayskull strike a deal with the devil for his son's life. So far have our heroes fallen from the grace and glory they once had. So, King Grayskull, who was from the 2002 show, and Scareglow, who never appeared in the show and in the mini-comics came from another dimension, is also now part of the Power Sword's creation by giving up this orb. I wonder if that will be important in the show later on. Ah, uh, whatever. Nothing matters anymore because this is not a sequel, not even a spiritual one, but it's its own thing. Now, does this mean the show will be bad? Not necessarily. It means once again that the lies pile up to the roof. Kevin Smith is intentionally lying to the fans. Netflix is trying to bait the old school fans into giving this a chance. Afraid that it might have the same Shira effect?
Possibly, but this comic book prequel is something odd as a testament to the many lies that have been going on pretty much since this show was announced. Is the comic book bad? No, but I wouldn't say it's the best. Its writing is average, and of course it contradicts many of the things that we held as true. And the same can be said about the interior art. It's decent, but it's not the best. The color is good. And though we don't have Adam perform the transformation and he might exclaim, I have the power, we can say this is a nice book and a nice introduction to this. One drawback it has, however, is that the book is a four-part story and it will be published on a monthly basis. So the story won't even be finished by the time we get the show released on Netflix. In any way, what we are calling out here is the lies, which once more are evident. Still, I hope the show is good. It may have lost me with so many moments where Smith has done this and the deceit is too much for me to bear. But I hope I am wrong for the many fans who are excited about this and want to watch it. I hope then the show is good and that people like it and I hope it isn't about Tila and all these lies are nothing of concern to anyone. Still I have to be honest and I doubt it in any way. So after giving my opinion it is only left for me to know yours. So let me know what you think down below in the comments about this comic book and if you plan on reading it or not and until next time peace out